Welcome back to the RV Shenanigans podcast brought to you by Liquefied. I'm Lauren, this is Ryan, and together we are Miller's in Motion. We had a ranch in Texas that we sold and are now enjoying life in our Alliance Valor. And we are currently coming to you from the wonderful Tyler, Texas. Isn't uh, we it are, pretty? We are currently here <laughs> for a horse show with Lauren, and yes, the windows are open um, because there's a pasture behind us. Mm -hmm. uh, fun fact, also, there's a dump tank, dump tanker, right there. So... The park we're currently in doesn't actually have sewer service, so once a week, twice a week, something like that, Thursdays, that's all I know, they bring a pumper trunk out, um, and they remove things in a manual way. And what does every good RVer do? We sit and we watch. Well, <laughs> so a lot of the people aren't up here. I happen to come back right before they did it. I don't like pumper services. I mean, they're perfectly nice people. That's not the problem. But... I just don't because we have so many valve handles on our coach. I'm not the biggest fan of them because, like, I came up and they use, like, a macerator suction system to get everything out a little faster. It's just wear and tear on the pipes and stuff that doesn't need to happen a lot. I'm a big fan of gravity. And half our valves were still closed because we have our three valves up front, two grays, one black, and then we have a black in the back as well. So we have a total of four valves plus we have a Volterra handle, which is a capped, and so we don't get any extra fun when we go take the cap off and so they had only pulled the one and then there's a handle above it in that one so like the one the tank that they actually did the dump wasn't being dumped and so that suction was coming in so just if you're going to have a dump service my one little disclaimer there is be aware of that and just know that you know they might need you to double check because you know your rig better than they ever are going to know your rig yeah there's no way for them to know all these different rigs nope i will say though that uh, liquefied for the win because that helps a lot of that waste and stuff break down already so big thanks to matt and the team at liquefied they're obviously one of our sponsors as well and speaking of why don't we just talk about liquefied for a second well let's do that what's the worst part about rving it's the black tank no one likes to have to deal with a stinky or messy black tank. Let the team over at Liquefied RV Black Tank Management help you out. Created from the team over at Matt's RV Reviews, this is a 100% biodegradable product made right here in the good old US of A. Liquefied will help break down your black tank waste as well as help with those odors. In addition to helping with those odors, it's got an actually really great orange smell to it. So not only does it help break down those odors, it also helps freshen the bathroom. One of my favorite features is actually this easy measure pour spout. Because it's designed this way, you don't have to bring in other cups or measuring devices of any kind. Dump what you need in for your size tank, put the cap back on, and you're done. To learn more about Liquefied RV Black Tank Tribute, you can visit liquefiedrv.com. Do us a favor, please support the brands that support us because they enable us to be able to bring you the podcast and the regular videos. To purchase liquefied black tank treatment, please see the link down below. All right. What are we talking about today? Flow Rider. The rapper. <laughs> Boots with the fur. And you're welcome for that. No, <laughs> Florida, because what RVer hasn't been to Florida? Specifically Central Florida. We've been trying to do more destination stuff. After the Super Show, we had a lot of interviews. And so we're trying to play catch up now on a lot of the places we went. And we spent a significant time in Central Florida. Well, significant to us. Maybe like six weeks? Well, yeah, yeah. significant to <laughs> us. And I will say that this is going to encompass things we may have already talked briefly about, um, like Walt Disney World and Fort Wilderness. We're not going to go into detail on any of that stuff because there's two full podcasts about those two topics. Mm -hmm. uh, they're literally the two podcasts right before this one. So if you are curious more about that, you can refer back to that podcast or those podcasts, depending on which one you're looking at. Uh, when we're done, but we're going to talk about all of Central Florida in this one because there is a lot going on in Central Florida. There sure is. So where do we start? So as far as RVs and getting around, the one thing you should know is there's a high season and a low season. And you can read that as a costly season and a cheaper season as well. True, mm -hmm. but a lot of RVers, uh, snowbirds if you may, like to flock to Florida. So just know if you're going to go to Central Florida in the winter, plan. 
you're not alone. <laughs> no, you're not. Planning would be a good idea. Um, there's a ton of campgrounds. There's state parks. Uh, you have Everglades National Park. That's really more South Florida, but I'll kind of give it a little bit. Um, there, there are campgrounds aplenty, but they do fill up, especially your extreme winter months up north. Once you get to Christmas, um, you know, then January, February, and March, it's pretty tough to find a site. Um, it's just now because we're recording this in mid-April. And it's just now starting to calm down a little bit down there. And people are starting to spread back out as warmth goes back north. And we, because of weather, actually got to Central Florida a day ahead of schedule. Right. And we had some trouble finding a, an RV site. And part of that has to do with our size. But the other was just availability. It was. And so we ended up staying one day at Disney's Fort Wilderness. One night, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, at Fort Wilderness, which was a blast. Um I can't imagine trying to get work done while we stayed there. but No, well, that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> and no, in and around Disney, there's a bunch of other RV resorts as well, including the infamous TTO, Thousand TTO. Trails Orlando. That's right. Um, that apparently, and the people that have stayed there, some of our friends have said, it's one of those things you have to experience. Well, we're not Thousands Trail members, and that one's one of their busier parks, especially mm -hmm. in the winter. And so that's probably not something that we're – ever gonna <laughs> well, never say never yeah but it's not something on the horizon that we're probably going to experience anytime soon so um why would someone want to come to central florida well, I think you've hit the first nail on the head that especially during winter, it's going to be warmer there than it is in many other locations. It is. So obviously the first thing is going to say that it's the weather, right? Mm -hmm. In the winter, it's going to be pretty warm. It can get cold some days. There can be some rain. But on the average, it's way better than, say, Wisconsin. That's right. In Ohio. <laughs> So that's, that's going to be the biggest reason. What's the second reason? Unless you like your snow. If you like your snow, then absolutely stay up there up north. I like my snow as long as there's skis on my feet, and I know that there's a warm beverage at the bottom of the hill. So the other reasons are going to be some of your big attractions like Disney and or, you know Orlando and yeah. all the Universal, that sort of stuff. And that's a whole lot of Orlando. There's actually quite a bit to do across all of Central Florida. Um, you have, what, when I say Central Florida, what I'm, kind of circling on a map would be Orlando in the center, Cape Canaveral off to the east, which is going to be kind of where the cruise terminal is. That's where um, the Kennedy Space Center is, SpaceX, all that stuff, all the way over to Tampa on the west side and St. Petersburg or St. Pete, as they refer to it as, and maybe even Sarasota a little bit. So you have two different versions of beaches. <laughs> you have Pacific Ocean side and Gulf side, and then you have the center, which you'd think there's not much to do, but there's a ton to do in the center, given that that's where Universal Studios is, Disney, all the other things that go into theme park lands um, down in the Orlando area. Plus, uh, you also have one of the more prominent campgrounds. So let's start with campgrounds. We obviously talked a little bit about TTO a little bit ago, but mm -hmm. one of the most popular campgrounds in the country is located in this area, and they're in Auburndale, Florida. They uh -huh. also played host to RV Unplug Season 2, which is coming out in a week from this, two weeks, May 28th. So that would be Camp Margaritaville. And um, even though there are other locations, this one is, is the one that we know best and was very popular. There are a lot of amenities there. There's, you know, really nice pools. There's mini golf. There's restaurants, shops, all kinds of stuff. Kids. And they have events all the time. Their goal is like resort style entertainment. Right. And it is pricey. I will say that. I mean, the cheapest sites when we were there started about, what was it, one, 125, 135? Mm -hmm. Something along those lines, which is just a standard back end. They have a lot of pull throughs. So it is a resort. So it's really easy to get in and out of. They want that experience to be good for you. And realistically, this is what I would call a destination resort. So yeah. some RV parks or RV resorts are built in areas where you're really just meant to be there and then go experience whatever it is around you. Kind of like by the Grand Canyon. Um, things that are by national parks or big cities or other things. Um, I would even say TTO is one of those because it's really there because it's only 15 miles from Walt Disney World. Um, you know, those types of places are there. Margaritaville is really meant to be come for a long weekend or a week, stay here. Right. They they would be okay if you didn't leave for the duration of your stay. In fact, they would love it because that means you're spending your money there instead of somewhere else. Exactly. And they've tried to make that possible. And they really have. You can rent your own golf cart. Like Lauren said, they have all the amenities that she already went over. There's pools. Um, there's not a whole lot else in that area. No, not immediately. There so really isn't. It is technically in Auburndale, Florida, but it is also very, very close to Lakeland, Florida, which is a little bit bigger of a city. Um, so... 
that is going to be the home of the Detroit Tigers spring training. There's a single A club that also plays there. I think they're the Lakeland Tigers is my understanding. Um, you have restaurants, uh, all kinds mm-hmm. of stuff in that area. It is a lot of chains, yeah. um, that kind of stuff. Uh, we only went to one off-site mm-hmm. with our friends Harold and Cindy. One night we were down there, we went to Ford's Garage. It was good. It was. It was very good. I didn't realize the Ford Motor Company had restaurants. <laughs> and that, that's who owns it. That's yeah. the crazy part. So, um, But it was good, and it was fun to hang out with them. But, you know, I the thing about these types of resorts for me is I feel like they hit a lot of demographics. I, it's I don't think it's us. Right. It's not. It's not ours. Now we didn't have any issues like with the children making noise or Mm-mm. bothering our rig per se. But just to understand that people there are on vacation, and that's the mentality that they take. And so they're not there working during the week right. most of the time. I mean, maybe there are a couple, but for the most part, the people we witnessed were there to have a good time. Yeah, and they had a good. And time. And they had a good um, time. Yeah, I, I don't think. When we when we talk about kids and people that are having a good time, mm-hmm. aka maybe a little bit more rambunctious with their drinking, um, that kind of stuff, don't take that as a knock towards it. We're all for that kind of stuff. I mean, we're fans of Disney. We're fans of doing that. Right. But as a full timer, you know, Monday to Friday and even Saturdays, a lot of days we're working during the day. Mm-hmm. It just happens to be from our RV in nice places a lot. And so, yeah. unfortunately for us, like it's it's a little bit more distracting in those types of places even if the kids and everybody weren't around there's still a tiki bar and a pool and a mini golf course and (laughs) right and so it's just setting your expectation right it is and so with that being said i do think that there's the other type of people that prefer more of boondocking and all that which we didn't get to do down there unfortunately um our stay at camp margaritaville was actually for the production of rv unplugged season two and so we were dead to the world. <laughs> that's a really good Basically. example. <laughs> and so that's kind of the downside is we did experience everything there. There were plenty of nights that us and Phil and Stacy and Todd and Steph wandered down to the Tiki Bar, especially in pre-production week. <laughs> um, but then as the series went on and the filming went on, obviously, you know, sleep was a commodity. So uh, we kind of sequestered down there. And then the last few days we went back out again. And then before we started heading back to Texas. so And everything there was very nice um, as far as the amenities went. They had fire pits. They had mm-hmm. all kinds of stuff. Um, and the food was pretty decent. I mean, The food was actually pretty solid. I will say it's still a quicker, I'm going to say theme park style food. Yeah. I think it was elevated for theme park food. Um, it, if you don't know what I'm talking about, burgers, chicken fingers, that kind of stuff. It was better than what you're going to find in one of the Disney parks on the average um, or Universal parks. But it still wasn't like I was ex- still expecting more flavor. I think that I'm always expecting more flavor, though. I think that's a theme. <laughs> we just like the way we like things. Spicy. <laughs> um, so moving on from that, as far as Lakeland, like I said, there's not a lot else to do in that area, unfortunately. Um, we did hear that there's a ton of like state parks that you can go visit in the area. Um, you just have to be careful because there's alligators friggin' everywhere. Um, in fact, one of the lakes we were doing some of the shooting in, and you'll see it in one of the episodes for RV Unplugged, um, apparently the day after we were done shooting, one of the guys that was there helping Derek um, was like, oh, yeah, we just saw a 10-foot alligator go right into that water that you guys were just in. I'm like, Awesome. <laughs> Glad I wasn't in there. Sorry, contestants. Um, but that's something you have to be aware of when you're at those parks. Um, yeah. And moving down the road to Tampa a little bit, we didn't mm-hmm. get to experience Tampa in all of its glory. So we've actually been to Tampa several times, but Kinda. it's always for the super show, the RV super show it in is. January. And so we spend so much time at the show. We don't really get to go off site too much. Um, we do one big charity dinner, Listen, but we've seen the Elks Lodge we've twice. We've seen the Elks Lodge and we've seen the fairgrounds. And that's about all of Tampa that we've seen. Yeah, the airport now. Oh, yeah, the airport. Woohoo. <laughs> <laughs> so we haven't gotten to experience as much of that as we would like to. But yes, it's there. Just know Tampa is going to be the home to a lot of the major sports teams in Central Florida. Mm-hmm. The Tampa Lightning, the Tampa Buccaneers. Um, I think that's it. <laughs> um, but there is, if you're a sports fan, that's kind of the place to go. Um, also, your West Coast beaches are going to be over in that area especially once you get down to St. Pete and then a little further south into Sarasota. There's apparently an island over there, Omni Island, Omni Island, A-M-A-I, however you say that. That's supposed oh, to be pretty cool. Is it Anna Marie Island? Yes. A-M-I? Yes. yes. 
Okay. So that's over in that area that as well. That is supposed to be really yeah. cool, but I don't think that's an RV thing. No. That is a leave your RV on mainland and go visit. And go visit. I yes. did When I did a quick little research on it, there mm-hmm. is an RV park not far off the island mm-hmm. on the mainland, but the, uh, the island itself, there are no RV sites, but there are rental homes. I believe there's a small boutique hotel. It's mm-hmm. not a big... No, it's not big, but it's supposed to be just beachy, totally yep. relaxed, family oriented. Yeah, lots of rest, like mom and pop restaurants. Yeah. Think ice cream shops, that kind of stuff. We're, let's put that on the calendar for next year. Just to take a little break and go over there? Yeah, that okay. sounds good. I'm, what do we do with the dogs? I don't know. Yeah, no. that's, that's next. You guys want to watch them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we will pay you in hugs. Um, <laughs> so another little tidbit, and some people are going to find this boring. Uh, but Central Florida is also home to the Streamsong Golf Resort. I did spend some time there. You do fly into Tampa. It's about an hour, hour, hour and a half away from the Tampa port, Airport. It's actually almost directly south of Lakeland by about 30 or 40 minutes. Um, really cool golf resort. A little pricey. Uh, but if you're in the area and you want to play a cool round of golf by um, some really famous designers, it is a cool spot. Um, I don't know that I'd go out there just to play golf for the one day. It's one of those things, kind of take your guy friends, make a weekend of it. Um, but if you happen to be in that area, uh, you know, you can park the RV and then go go down there for a few days, hang out, play golf, have some drinks, eat some dinners, that kind of stuff, and then head back to the RV and get back on it. Again, that's assuming you're full-time. If you're part-time and you're a golfer, just fly into it. But um, just one of those things, that's another amenity that's right there. I'll be on the beach. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> So as far as the rest of Central Florida, Mm -hmm. um, there's, it's one of those unique things because if you move the further east you move, it's a very different feel. Very, yeah. Because there's not as much to do. Like obviously you get into Orlando. In fact, let's, we we can talk about Orlando a little bit more proper. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been going to Orlando, well, since I was a little kid, but for the last... 11 years now Mm -hmm. i've been going there at least once a year you haven't no um but it's a pga merchandise show is at one of the largest convention centers in the world it's called the orange county convention center it is in the city of orlando um and that's in orange county and so i've been going to that area for a long time obviously you have your disney we did a whole episode on disney we're not going to dive into that a little further north in a town called Dr. Phillips, right kind of near close to the airport, you're going to have Universal Studios Florida, um, which is comprised of two theme parks, about to be three. They're about to open Epic Universe. Woo-hoo. And one water park, and then an area they call City Walk. It's kind of like Disney Springs as a reference point. So restaurant, shopping, entertainment, that kind of stuff. Um, there are RV parks up there near it, kind of. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, there's nothing on site for Universal. Universal is a little bit more spread out. You know, you when you right. talk about Disney, you hear people talk about the Disney bubble. Mm-hmm. Um, they really want you to stay inside that bubble because then they can control your visuals, the food, everything. And so you have Fort Wilderness, which is their main campground. Like I said, there's off-site campgrounds that are a little less expensive, but now you're outside that bubble. At Universal Studios for an RV, you don't really have that option. It's off-site or nothing, or you have to get a hotel room. Hey, Universal. Hint, hint. Nudge, nudge. I don't think they have room. (laughs) They can find room. It's fine. They are lacking. Even their new theme park, their third theme park is not actually attached to the other ones. It's not attached to the main resort. And their two newest hotels aren't either. So they're struggling over there as far as room. I think they're pretty much capped out. Yeah, land. Um, As far as the rest of Orlando, there's still a ton of stuff. There's what they call iDrive. This is going to be a little more niche I don't even know Kitchy. the best. Kitschy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be things like wax, like the Madame Tussauds Mac, Wax Museum. Right. Um, they've got the big bungee uh, swinger flyer thingamajigger. That the, is fun. The Orlando Eye is there, which is mm-hmm. their big Ferris wheel, mm-hmm. um, that kind of thing. There's still a ton to do, and you can get one of those like passes. That's like what I was just going to say, yeah. Where you can do a bunch of that stuff at a one fixed cost. And so from that perspective, it's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Um, there's not, the more in the downtown you get, and this is true with most cities, just like Orlando, the more downtown you get, the less RV sites there are. Or the less RVs you want to actually tow. Like, I wouldn't imagine towing down I-Drive. Oh, my gosh, no. Yeah, there's no way I'd want to I barely want to drive down I-Drive sometimes. <laughs> in fact, that's another thing. I wouldn't. Right. It's just so traffic It's not that it's bad. I mean, the only thing I can equivalent it to in my brain is like trying to drive down the strip in Vegas. It's yeah. just so trafficy that it's it's not worth it sometimes. No, that's a good analogy. Mm-hmm. Just the hotels aren't as nice. Um, well, some of the hotels aren't as nice. There's mm-hmm. a few that are good. Um, you're also gonna have a Top Golf down there. You're gonna have a ton of restaurants. Um, 
find the local stuff. That's the only thing I'm going to tell you is yeah. like, you know, there are, it, it's Orlando. It's very commercialized with the theme parks. Mm-hmm. When you get off property, every chain restaurant and their brother has a place there. Yep. Try to find the off the beaten path places. You know, obviously if you're staying at Disney or Universal and you're eating there, it is what it is. I, I, those are technically chain places, but because they're specific to those parks, that's a little different. Um, but, you know, avoid the chilies. That kind of stuff. There's a place called Miller's um, Ale House. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which I think they just call the Ale House. Um, I'm trying to remember what people we know in the area have taught me, which is not much. But <laughs> what? Ouch. <laughs> no, and I think last time we went, we were in the area trying to find. It, it is kind of difficult to find those mom and pops places um we ended up at a carabas one night and it's just kind of like you can get that anywhere do try to find that local flavor and if you are in your rv just know that because it's chains i think if we had the choice between cooking for ourselves or chains we'd almost rather cook for ourselves yeah because at least now we're getting it the exact way we want it Mm -hmm. um and to be honest i don't think we're bad at cooking so that helps (laughs) very true Mm -hmm. so moving a little bit further east now and this Mm -hmm. is where we get a little disclosure this is mostly research we've done we have not spent a lot of time east of Orlando, but one of the most popular reasons, there's really two big ones, that people go from Orlando and east. I know that the drive is only about 45 minutes to an hour to the coast from like downtown Orlando. Uh, do you know what the two are? Well, I was hoping you were going to say the cruise port because I would like to experience that one. What's the other one? We're going to come back to that. You got the one. Space Center. Yeah, you got them. Ching. Science and cruising. Which, I'll be honest, I, I like you mm-hmm. said, you know, there are a bunch of ports all around Florida, the largest being the Port of Miami, um, because it's the close to the Keys, and or not the Keys, well, the Keys, and the Bahamas and everything else. Um, the second largest is actually Cape Canaveral. So it's the home of Disney Cruise Line, Carnival, uh, Royal Caribbean, and Norwegian all have cruise ports mm-hmm. there. Then you also have um, the cruise port in Tampa. They only service, I believe, Carnival and Norwegian, and it's yeah. smaller terminals. Mm-hmm. The, the, the channel is not as big there, so they can't get the bigger ships in. So a lot of the bigger ships stay in Miami or in Cape Canaveral. So with that being said, the cruise port there, so that's a big reason, especially for Disney. Mm-hmm. Um, Disney also has Disney Cruise Lines. And so there's a lot of people that will take a longer vacation and they will do a stay at, Un- at yeah, Universal Studios. Ooh, no, no, they, no, they won't. <laughs> they'll stay at Walt Disney World and then they'll jump on a ship. So they'll do like four or five days in the parks and then they'll do like a three or four night cruise. There's and some people that do more. They'll do more on one end or the other, or they'll do seven night or whatever. Does Disney still have like the transport that goes that helps you get from one to the other? They do. It's an it's a secondary charge. And so if you have reservations, they used to sell land and sea packages. They right. don't sell them together like that anymore. Oh. But you can still make them yourself. So like if you find a cruise you want to do, then you can book your Walt Disney World stay before or after. I think what was happening is they were flooding the parks too much ah. because they always did pre or post. And I think they just said, and some people wanted to change stuff that they just mm-hmm. said, you know, we're going to stop bundling it mm-hmm. and we'll just let you do this. And if you do that, you can book uh, the Disney Cruise Line transportation to pick you up from your hotel. The cool thing about that is they will pick you up from your hotel, but they will also take your bags from you there all the way to your stateroom. Oh, okay. And so kind of like what the Magical Express used to do. Oh, back in the good old days. Right, which if you're not familiar with that, it was a bus service that Disney owned that would pick you up at the airport. But when you checked your bags um, in your home airport, you would put your own tag on it from Disney and it was Mm -hmm. marked a certain way. And they had their own baggage handlers. I'm not really sure the term. That would get it and then take it to the park. So you never had to go to baggage claim to pick up your stuff. You just magically went to your hotel room. It took some time. It wasn't just instant. I mean, you'd be there for three or four hours. No, but you didn't have to wait at bag- baggage claim. Right. You got to go get on the bus and everybody sang Mickey songs. And it, it was an experience. <laughs> it Please was. bring back the Magical Express. Well, and, and what I think they're trying to do is there's a, there's a company called Brightline, which is a train service line. Ah. Uh, there's a high-speed train now that connects Miami, Fort Lauderdale, and Cape Canaveral. Mm-hmm. and they just expanded into Orlando. Good. So the train track only goes as far as the airport at the moment. So if you are cruising um, out of Cape Canaveral and you don't have your RV and you fly into MCO or the International Airport in Orlando, um, you can actually jump on the Brightline train and go right to um, down there. And then you yeah. can take a bus or an Uber to your hotel or to the cruise terminal, depending on where you're going and when you got there and all that kind of stuff. So As long as they play Disney music and we get to sing the whole way, I'm good. Headphones in a sound booth. Um <laughs> <laughs> so Cape Canaveral obviously is a big cruise port 
all of those cruises you can catch there. I know that there's some RV parks that do allow storage. They actually specialize in that stuff to where yeah. you can suck your slides in and you can still power, but you're not on sewer water. It's a lot less expensive than a full site, and they're a lot smaller, obviously. But you can store your RV there while you go, which is a really cool thing because not always do you want to rent a whole site for a week while you're on a cruise kind of thing. Right. Um, assuming you don't have dogs and have to board them and all that, too. Um the other thing that they're most well known for is the Kennedy Space Center. So this is where NASA has done most of their launches all the way back to the Mercury missions, which is pre the Apollo moon landings and all that stuff. So this combined with the Johnson Space Center in Houston make up most of NASA. Mm-hmm. Uh, they also now lease land out to SpaceX as well as other um, individual companies. So if you ever hear of like a Falcon 10 a heavy rocket that launches or the Starlink um, satellites that launch, this is where they launch from. Woohoo! There is also the Johnson Space Center Visitor Center, so they'll take you through all the stuff. They have the Rocket Park. Both versions of the Space Centers in Houston and Cape Canaveral have this. Um, obviously, in Houston, that's where Mission um, Command, Mission Control, the people that are in charge of the missions. Mission Control. Mission Control is. And so the launches and everything else is down in Cape Canaveral. So they're a little yeah. different. And we did get to look at the one in Houston. We did. And I will say that if if the one in Florida is comparable or even better, it's a really neat experience. And it's something you don't see anywhere else. I believe it's better because the facility is just larger. And yeah. you actually get to go, assuming there's no launches, you mm-hmm. actually get to go to the launch pads where like the Apollo missions took off yeah. and, and see that stuff. And then they have... Uh, more of the things that actually went to space. I mean, mm-hmm. don't get me wrong. They have plenty of it down here, too. But because a lot of it landed here, um, like all the space shuttles, this is where they landed was Cape Canaveral. And so, you know, they have their own shuttle. I believe Atlantis is the one that's on display there. And um, admittedly, I, I am a nerd, but I'm not a space nerd. And I found it really neat. Yeah. I think it's one of those things that I don't know that I drive all the way from Orlando just for the Space Center. But if we were doing a cruise... Oh, well, see, I think I would. Oh, would you? I, like, I really thought it was that once in a lifetime. I'm not a space nerd. <laughs> I'm not a space nerd. But I would drive an hour just to do this. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> so the way I would do it personally is if we were going to do a cruise, I'd go a full day early. Kind of like what we did. So we took a, an Alaskan cruise and we wanted to see Seattle. Mm-hmm. Spoiler, we didn't care for it. Um, not that we don't dislike Seattle, but it just wasn't our cup of tea. Right. Um, we went out a full day and a half early. So we landed, we had the whole next day and then the next morning we got on the ship. So we had a whole day to explore Seattle. That's how I would probably do Cape Canaveral. Yeah, that makes sense. Or, you know, Mm -hmm. a few days at Disney. (laughs) That's more like it. Then take the train over because that sounds like more fun than a bus. There we go. And then, you know, I don't know how long uh, the Kennedy Space Center Mm -hmm. uh, and all that stuff would take, but... So let us plan your vacations and let us live vicariously through you. (laughs) Or we could just go do it. All right. What else on on that side? So as far as the rest of Central Florida, you know, it's without getting into like Everglades National Park and a lot of things that are Mm -hmm. south, Key West and all those things, without going too far north, just know when you get there, Florida's big like you don't realize how you big don't florida realize is. it yeah and i know we're kind of coming back to travel just think of it as a full circle thing um but it's funny because you cross that the border near alabama georgia and all that into the tech well for us coming from texas mm-hmm. um up in the panhandle and you're like we're in florida and then you have another day and a half of driving to get to central florida because it's so true <laughs> well it, it's for us it was six hours across florida and followed by another four hours south of florida mm-hmm. and so there's not it, it it's it's kind of like texas texas in that way is it, depending on where you enter and exit the state you can be there for a day and a half especially with an rv even longer in texas but, but yeah. yeah you can you can be there for a long time and so it's everybody thinks mm-hmm. that texas is this state and everything out east is kind of smaller compact and it, mm-hmm. and it is on the average florida is not that well and i think it's because also you enter through that panhandle so you right. have to drive all the way through it people that are coming from the north wouldn't have to necessarily drive in that same way but there was one thing that we didn't talk about okay and i figured this wasn't on your radar so i'm surprising you with this and this is something that i want to do one of the times that we are in central florida send help (laughs) yes because um it's a protected event and i i'm not sure where else in the world that you can do this i want to swim with the manatees you can swim with them yes 
For some reason, I thought you could go with them and you could kayak around, but you couldn't swim with well, them. Well, maybe you can kayak with them. I want to, I want to be in the water with the manatees. <laughs> that is something that there is a lot. And there is another thing we're going to talk mm-hmm. about, too, that I also forgot about. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, obviously, mm-hmm. a lot of places in Florida, the, the water stays warm in the winter. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of sea life migrates there. Yes. Um, from the north and manatees being one of them as the gulf gets cooler and the areas that they're in they swim to all the little inlets that stay warmer and they kind of hang out in there in the summer yes but they are protected and you can't just jump in and swim with them and so there are certain dedicated programs <laughs> please don't just jump in and pet the manatees like a spider monkey um <laughs> so that's my disclaimer uh but there are certain programs and places that We'll guide you with that. So, so depending on where you're staying, just know you mm-hmm. could probably just Google it and find a whole bunch more information yeah, I than I currently have. Between an hour and two from where we were staying. Yeah. So. so in addition to that, if you are into horses and all that stuff, Ocala is a little bit of a capital of that. It sure is. There's the World Equestrian Center. And fun fact, they have RV parking. And depending on the event that is or isn't going on, you can park there if you're not attending the horse show. And my understanding is it's pretty reasonable, concrete sites, easy to get in and out of. I think, and it seemed to be pretty open. In fact, when we Mm -hmm. were coming down, I know that you said they had availability. Yeah. When Mm -hmm. we were coming down, we just wanted to get further. So Alcala still is another hour and a half-ish from where we were trying to land. And so we wanted to keep coming down mm-hmm. south towards Orlando, plus Fort Wilderness, Disney World, come on. Yeah, and I think they were actually comparably priced when we got down yeah. to it, ver- the World Equestrian Center versus the fort. But I do think where you can get have an advantage if you're trying to find a last-minute spot in mm-hmm. Central Florida, especially in the winter, is that I think a lot of people assume that you have to be showing a horse or right. be part of World Equestrian. That's not necessarily the case. Now, they do hold sites for special events, Right. Because obviously, like, if we were going to a horse show there with Stella mm-hmm. and we would need a site, they can't just get, like, if we don't know we're coming until three weeks prior, they mm-hmm. still have to have somewhere for us to stay. But anything they don't, it's supposedly a very large RV park. Mm-hmm. And so they'd still have quite a few sites. So, again, mm-hmm. for the price, it's more of a availability situation. It is. And it's not going to be a resort. It's not going to be amenities, anything like that. It's full hookups, but you're not going to find a restaurant on site necessarily. Right. And it's not going to have a pool, that sort of stuff. So compared to other equestrian facilities, it's oh, yeah. amazing. It's like, top notch. Like the one we're currently at, we said in our intro just a little bit, like mm-hmm. we're on a gravel site. And of course it's about to start raining, which means we're going to be on a mud site. Yes. Um, we don't have sewer, so they do pump outs and we do have water and electric. Uh, which at the end of the day is fine. And no Wi-Fi here. No, yeah, there's no Wi-Fi. There's no clubhouse. In fact, there's probably only about 20 RVs in here and a crap ton of horse trailers right, right over there. <laughs> but again, it's about where you are. And if, if you're showing a horse being able to be on property, and this is the same for World Equestrian, mm-hmm. that's the priority is being able to be mm-hmm. close to your animals so that you don't have to drive in 30 minutes, check them, because there's some mornings that trainers and grooms will get up at 5 a.m. Oh, yeah. and be down there to check on them, everybody, and then be ready to show by 7.30 or 8. Yeah. And then on the flip side of that, they won't be done showing until 5, 6, 7, sometimes later yeah. in certain scenarios so they might not be out of there until 10 o'clock I was going to say we'll do a night check around 10 o'clock right. and then a lot of the grooms are back there 5 or 6 and so being on site's a big deal so not mm-hmm. to bore you with horse show stuff but it's the reality of our life that's right so that's going to do it for our central Texas hopefully this helps if you're going to the area please know that we really meant this to be combined with our Disney World and Fort Wilderness there's just so much into those two mm-hmm. places uh, even though they're in one place it's like an inception moment um, <laughs> um, that, you know, we obviously cover Central Florida in this one. So if you're curious more about Walt Disney World or RVing at Disney or staying at Fort Wilderness, make sure and check out those two podcasts from last week and the week prior. That's right. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and let us know. Also, this is coming out early enough now. If you are going to be coming to the 2024 Alliance National Rally in Indiana, we would like to hear from you. Yes, please. Um, we are... More than likely, I almost don't want to say this, doing at least one live podcast from there some way, somehow. Well, that sounds like a good plan. I'm excited for all those details. The problem is I haven't been given those details. (laughs) So um, I just know we've been asked to do it. I said we'd love to do a podcast. Mm -hmm. This is not florida rv super show situation we're doing three a day Mm -hmm. we're going to do one we will do it live and i'm we're going to do something a little bit different we want it to be more of a listener q a style show so what we want is if you are coming to the national rally 
reach out to us. We'll let you know as soon as we know what time and where on the grounds we're going to be. And we're actually have mics set up in the audience, so you can come up and ask questions. And we're going to get a handful of people to come have the show with us like some people from Alliance and maybe some other friends that happen to be in the area as well. I know Matt's going to be there. Mm -hmm. And allies with you guys being there, if you have a topic you want us to cover, make sure to let us know. Or a guest. Ahead of time. If you have a specific guest you'd like us to chat with Mm -hmm. um, at the show, it's going to be one of our longer shows, probably close to 45 minutes to an hour. Last time you said that, we were in here for nearly two hours. It happens. It happens. That's Phil's fault. (laughs) I'm I'm jumping on the bandwagon. That's Phil's fault. (laughs) No, we do. And that's, that's some of the best podcasts we've had is when those conversations can just go. So um, just know that that can be a longer one. Mm -hmm. And the best part is we get to hang out with everybody like you guys, Mm -hmm. if you're going to be there, just know if you uh, don't have tickets already, the national rally, it is sold out. There is a waiting list you can get on, but there's no guarantees you'll get in. Also for future reference, if you'd like to come and you don't own Alliance and you're thinking about buying an Alliance, you can come on. Um, They do have a, what they call other brands um, category, uh, which is, essentially where you can come you have your own lot and so whether you have well it doesn't matter what brand any other brand any uh, other you can still come experience it that's what i did last year um and just know that it's a very welcoming community of people so it really doesn't Mm -hmm. matter what rv you have they'll they'll welcome you with open arms you got it Thank you guys so much for listening. As always, a big thanks to the team over at Matt's RV Reviews and Liquefied for sponsoring the podcast. Yes, thank you so much. And we will catch you guys next week. Bye.